Um, so Instagram is really um, starting to become um, a lot like Facebook. There's some differences, but definitely a lot of users on there, a lot more people spending time on there. So that's why I want to talk about how to make the most out of Instagram. Um, I am a little cautious in going into the algorithm because what I don't want is for our focus to be on doing everything perfectly with an Instagram that we get so wrapped up in the algorithm that we get overwhelmed and don't post at all. So please, as we go through this, like keep in mind that posting and just putting it up there and putting yourself out there is better than overthinking and trying to get the algorithm perfect. So the things that we're talking about right now or today is just going to be about like, if you have time to like really strategize or think about it, these are some things to maybe keep in mind as you're posting, but I would not overcomplicate it. Like more than anything, just put yourself out there, try new things and um, see where that goes. So play around with it. Don't let this overwhelm you because it can get pretty strategic and we don't have to make it that difficult. So um, I'm gonna try to keep it pretty simple and things that we can actually use. Um, and please play along. So if you have Instagram, um, feel free to get out your phone. And as we talk through some of these things, jump on there so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If not, we can always do a one-on-one -on -one too. And I can kind of walk you through um, the actual pages. Okay, so Instagram versus Facebook. Um, they're obviously both social networks. Um, they have a lot of users. A lot of people spending at least an hour a day on them, but they are not the same algorithm. They work differently. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Facebook actually owns Instagram, um, but the algorithms themselves are different. So they are not the same. Um, and the reason is, is because when you go on Facebook, if you post, um, say you post something and you get a bunch of people who like, comment, or share it right away, Facebook is gonna boost that out to more people. And they're gonna boost it out to people who they think are gonna like it, but it's not necessarily individual like people that have engaged with your posts before. Instagram is very personalized. So when you jump on Instagram, what you see on your feed or the explore page is based on what Instagram thinks that you're gonna like based on what you're currently viewing and engaging with. So it's very personal. Um, so it, they act very different in that way. So we'll talk through more specifics on that, but basically your Instagram is never going to look the same as Steve's Instagram or Rich's Instagram. They're all going to be very specific on your interests, who you follow and interact with and what topics you are mo most interested in. So we'll go through that here more in detail and how to make that work for us. Um, Thomas. Dimson, a software engineer and Instagram shared, Instagram could theoretically figure out who you care about the most based on how you use the app. So that is what you're seeing. So the engineers in, in Instagram um, use a lot of artificial intelligence. You'll hear it, um, AI used quite often um, to try to figure out what they can put in front of you that you're going to engage with, what you're going to interact with. So they choose people whose content you like, possibly including stories and lives, live videos. So if you see content and you're liking it um, or you're sharing it and you're viewing people's stories all the way through or you're messaging them from their stories, they track all of that and then they're going to show you more of that person's content. People you direct message. So in Facebook, I don't know that your messages really matter that much. In Instagram, they matter a lot. Instagram will um, track who you're having conversations with, who you're closest with, and then they show you more of that person's content. And people you search for. So the topics you search for and the users you search for, they're gonna also um, show you more of those people every time you log on to Instagram and people you know in real life. Because Facebook owns Instagram, Facebook knows who you have in your profile. Oh, someone's um, got like a cup or something that's making noise, sorry. <laughs> um, but they know who you're related to or who you're close with, and they're gonna show you a lot more of those people. So you might notice when you get on Instagram, you're seeing, who, who is that? <laughs> 
Let me see. It just says iPhone. Maybe that's it. Um, okay. Hopefully that helps. Sorry, guys. Um, so anyway, they're going to show you people that you're related to, who you're friends with, all of that. So as you can see, like it is very specific to you. Whereas on Facebook, who you're friends with on there, they're going to show you that. But they're also going to show you like Facebook will show you more of like um, top posts, not posts that you've necessarily interacted with before. So that's how it's a little different. I got a lot of this information. If you are looking for more like of a deep dive into this, later.com has great blogs on specifics with both Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all of them. All right, next. Any questions on this so far? All right. The factors Robin. that, what's up? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. What did you say? Later.com? Later.com. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, factors that influence your ranking. So meaning how you can get to the top of someone's feed or explore page, or if they're searching hashtags, how you get to the top um, is, oh, I just, sorry. I just went through the page for you. Um, these areas here are where you can kind of control your ranking. So you can be more at the top of these pages um, the more you use the algorithm. So we'll go into that. Um, you want to get people to interact with your posts and stories. The more they comment, like, share, or direct message you, the more you will go to the top of their stories when they log into their page. So in Instagram, the the goal is more of having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the most amount of people that you can. That way, when they log on to Instagram, you come up to the top of their stories and the top of their feed. On Facebook, that's not necessarily the case. So Instagram, it's a lot more one-on-one -on -one conversations. So um, you want to interact with their posts and stories. That way you show up on their, on their stories and, they sh and you show up on theirs. Rich, did you have a question? Okay. Um, for stories, if you go on to your phone and you, if you're in Instagram, when you go on there um, and go to the little house page or the little house button, at the top, you'll see the stories. And when you create one, you can click what's a little like sticky note. And those are what are called stickers. And when you put a sticker on your stories, you can do polls or questions. There's a little slider scale to see how much someone loves your post. When someone interacts with that or they answer your poll, that's considered an interaction. And Instagram thinks that you're a quality account. They like what you're posting and they're gonna show you to more of the people that you've had conversations with. So you want to encourage them to interact with what you're posting and stickers is such a great way to do that. Um, so play around with that. You can add music, location, um, real estate like polls are such a good way too because people are so interested in real estate and a lot of people think they know more than they actually do about real estate. So if you like ask like quizzes or like um, polls, you know, which would you rather, you know, live by a lake or have a pool, whatever it is, and people are giving their opinion, the more you're going to get direct messages and engagement, and then you're going to build your sphere of people who are seeing every time you post. Hashtags are huge. So, um, and let me remind you too, I feel like it was just last year I was saying hashtags didn't really matter. This Instagram algorithm literally changes all the time based on what users are doing, what they're interested in and what they're using within the app. So right now, hashtags are a big way to build a bigger sphere. You can have a max of 30 hashtags and it does not matter if you use the hashtags in your caption or in the comments. I like to put the caption, the um, hashtags in the comments so that it's hidden from my post and it looks a little bit cleaner, but it does not matter with the algorithm, whether they're in your um, caption or the comments. But you want to all at the end talk about how many, like what types of cap hashtags to use to build your sphere. There is a, um, there is a um, system to that. And then make your content stand out. I see a lot of realtors posting like collages 
and they get they're so small people don't interact with them make sure you have um, a focal point in each of your pictures it's a very clear picture that someone is going to be more attracted to if you have three or four pictures in the same graphic or more or i see sometimes agents will um, post like a whole flyer with text people can't read that it's so small and there's no like real focal point to it so instagram is very visual try to max out the amount of space you can so the post itself is square but if you're doing a story you do it vertical so you can take up the whole screen and the more you do that the more someone is likely to engage with what you're posting so um, try to eliminate at all graphics with a lot of text or a lot of photos in one post any questions or Additions to that, Tracy, I know you said you've had some really good luck with Instagram. What do you think so far? Do you have anything to add? Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry. Um, I did not know that about the stories. It's really interesting because I don't use my stories probably to my full advantage, but I have noticed what you're saying about the feed. In my feed, it's totally random things that come up and I always have to search for people that I want to search for, which is weird, some, some of my running friends. and um, But all of my clients found me on Instagram, and I really use the hashtags um, to help my business grow. I just, I had a uh, question about that. Mm -hmm. So is it more beneficial to use the same hashtags every single time? And so that way, if somebody's following that hashtag, that they would happen to come across you or is it better to use unique ones every time or a, mi a mix? That's such a great question. So I do recommend having like a branded hashtag for yourself that you use every time, okay. because if someone um, likes like two or three posts of yours in a row with that same hashtag, Instagram will actually notify them and say, hey, you really like Tracy Hunter's Instagram or tra hashtag Tracy Hunter. Do you wanna follow that hashtag? And so that gives them the option to follow everything you post with that hashtag. Okay. But what I would discourage is posting like the same hashtags in a row. Like some people are copying and pasting a group of hashtags and like just pasting that into the comments every time. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram will actually flag that as spam. So you want to make each has hashtag grouping um, specific to that post and like relevant to what you're posting about. Right. Okay but I would use like your branded hashtag each time. Right, okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, great question. It, so when you copy and paste it too, I've heard, so I'm guilty of copying and pasting hashtags mm -hmm. because there's so many, it's easier to just have in your notes, like which ones you like and copy and paste them into the comments. Um, but Instagram flags that they do like if you type out each hashtag individually um, and they, they see that as more of a genuine post rather than spam if you type it out. All right. Consistency matters. This is something I learned in looking this up. Um, the more consistently and frequently you post to Instagram, the more Instagram recognize you as a quality account. And therefore they will show you to more of the people you've had conversations with or people that might be interested in your posts. So you come up in the rankings, the more consistently you post. Um, not only is it a matter of how consistently you post, but how often you're logging into the app. If you're only logging into the app every once in a while, um, they're not going to show your posts as much. They're going to um, kind of hide it in the feed. Of course, some people will still come across it if they follow you. But um, the more you log in and just scroll and like a few posts, the more engagement you're going to get for the things that you post later on. Um, also, if you post every single day for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden you're posting like once every four days, Instagram recognizes that and you'll start to drop in followers and engagement because they're not seeing and recognizing your um, posts. So Instagram will actually notice if you have a drop off in interaction. So you wanna, um, when I was looking this up and like the data shows that if you just were consistent, like with posting once every four days, that's better than posting all the time and then all of a sudden dropping. So they actually value freq or consistency over frequency, if that makes sense. 
um, rule of thumb, try to stay consistent for best results. So just commit to something that is okay with uh, that you feel like is a um, good goal to post every once in a while. I was just listening to a, um, a webinar a few days ago and this girl, if you don't follow her name is Jen's Trends. Um, and I have it linked at the back at the um, end of this too. She said she literally only posts twice a month and she has thousands of followers, but she's consistent in posting twice a month and she makes sure that what she's doing is quality. So it really just, it just depends on how much you can um, take the time to do this, but stay consistent. Timeliness. So in the past, Instagram, it didn't really matter how old your post was. If it was relevant to somebody, they showed it, but now they do rank based on the age of the post, but also Instagram is paying attention to when you post for your specific audience. So if you have a creator account or a business account, you can go into insights. Um, so if you were to go into Instagram, I'm going to go up here. Let me see where it is. I have a business account and in the middle, there's a button that says insights. And when you click that, it will actually tell you your top posts. But as you scroll down, it will also tell you, um, here it is. It'll tell you what time of day someone likes your post or most people are liking your post um, and what time of day they're viewing it. It'll also tell you um, how many website clicks you got from your posts, all kinds of data that's free to you. And Instagram will encourage you, actually reward you for posting during the times that your audience is most active. So if you have, I honestly don't pay attention to that because if I did, I would never post. It is too much for me to think about. But if it's something that you have, like, you know, it matters to you about your Instagram and building that, that's a great way to build an audience is posting when they're most active on your account. So you can pay attention to that. I would recommend um, switching to either a creator or professional account if you don't have one. You don't have to start all over. It's just a matter of switching the profile and then you get those insights for free and you have the ability to promote your post if you want to. Um, you can increase engagement by posting when your audience is more likely to see it. I have a habit of getting ahead of myself. I don't even know why I have these slides. Um, a big myth is that video does better. Here's the thing. I'm a big proponent on video. I think if you can do something on video, it should be that way. Um, just because, you know, the, um, across all social media videos typically do better. However, for the algorithm, um, Instagram does not favor either of those. So they show both video and photos equally to the people who would be interested in what you're talking about. So if you're fearful of video, it's okay. You can do photos or maybe you just like to do photos better. Um, that's okay. Um, and you know what the thing is, is that each audience is different. So you might find that your audience actually interacts more when you do photos versus video. So you just got to play around with it and see what your audience engages with the most. However, with stories and reminder, that's the bubbles at the top of the screen that scroll through those last 24 hours. If you go live on your stories, those get priority. So out of all of your 2000 people that you're following, if you go live, you go to the very top of that story. So when someone logs in, you're the first thing they see. They see your handle, your name. It's great brand awareness. And the um, likelihood of them tapping on that to see what you have to say is high. People are really watching um, Instagram live stories. And the thing is, is I think it's 85% of people don't listen to videos with the sound on. So you kind of need captions with Facebook and YouTube. With Instagram, people listen with the sound on. I think it's because there's like music integrated and stuff like that too, but more people are listening with a sound on when you do a video on Instagram than other platforms. Account types, we kind of already talked about this. There's a personal account, creator, and business. Instagram does not care what type of account you have. It really just matters to you on what um, features you want on each of them. A lot of the influencers uh, you see on Instagram use a creator account. A lot of businesses who are promoting things and spending money on ads use the business account, but the creator and business are pretty similar. There's not a huge difference there.
but they're all treated equally as far as like ranking and showing up in people's feeds and explore pages. The other thing to that is if you have followers who interact a lot with businesses, then guess what? Your business account, like your posts are going to pop up more with them. So that's also audience specific. But as far as the algorithm goes, Instagram does not care which account you have. To get insights though, like we just talked about, as far as like finding out when people are um, looking at your profile and who's engaging when, you do have to have the creator or business account. Any questions so far? A little break on that. Anything to add? Has anybody used those, Tracy? Um, I just had a question about the promoting. Mm -hmm. uh, does that link it to Facebook? Is that what that does or? You can, so if you have a Facebook business page, you can link it to Instagram. And then when you promote on Facebook, it will also promote for you on Instagram as a part of that ad. But if you don't want to link them, say you don't have a Facebook business page and you just want to promote on Instagram, you can do that with the business. Okay. You just like set up a credit card or PayPal and then you can set the audience and everything just like you would on Facebook. Okay. Um, additional ways to hack the algorithm. So check your DMs, make sure you reply to them. The more you are engaging with people who are asking you questions or messaging you, the more Instagram values your account and will show you to more people. So make sure you reply. Um, conversations in your DMs are strong engagement indicators. So Instagram loves when people use the tools that they give you. So make sure to use that. And in your posts, add a call to action. So it doesn't have to be, hey, I'm a realtor, call me today. It doesn't have to be salesy like that, but maybe it's like, hey, save this post for later. If someone saves your post, Instagram loves that. That means that you're putting out valuable content. So ask people, save this post, or hey, send this to somebody who can use it, whatever it is. If you're posting about tips right now, right now is a great time in a lot of markets to sell your home. Tell people why and say, hey, send this to someone who's been thinking about selling their home. If they do that and you gave them the permission to do that, the more strong your account becomes and you'll see your engagement and your followers increase. So make sure to add a call to action. Some of the um, influencers that I'm following that are giving tips on this are saying, add a call to action to every single post. And I actually have a whole list, if you guys want it, of call to actions that you can use. Um, I can send that to you guys with the recording of this. But, um, you know, I don't do, I personally don't do that. Um, but I do every once in a while, if I'm putting out a guide or some type of tip on real estate, I'll say, hey, tag someone, you know, or comment below who could use this information. Um, and that does seem to help. Optimize your hashtags to reach top search categories. So um, here is the secret sauce for what Jen's Trends says. Here are the hashtags that you should use in every post. Four to five popular hashtags, meaning 500K to a million. Um, so when you go into your Instagram and you search a hashtag, um, so you hit the search button down here. You probably can't see this, but hit the, hit the search button down here. If you go up here and search tags and say you type in real estate, I'll type in real estate. It says up here, 27.4 thousand posts have been made with that hashtag. So you want four to five hashtags like that that are super popular. Then you want five to six moderately popular hashtags, three to five niche hashtags, meaning like, Indie Realtor, Florida Realtor, something location wise would be great there. And then like Tracy was talking about one to three branded hashtags each time. And the reason you want to do this is because when someone goes to a search button and they search a specific hashtag, say I'm going to do real estate. Um, let's see if I search real estate. It will come up as two categories. There will be one that says top and there will be one that's recent. Almost nobody goes to the recent tab. When you search a hashtag, a lot of times people scroll the top category, they find a picture they like, and then they're getting on your profile. They're looking at all of your posts. In order to get to this top category, Jen's Trends, who has, I think, 24,000 followers, she does a great job, does a lot of um, Instagram tips. She says this is the secret sauce to 
um, adding these types of hashtags to get to that top. And that's the way she's built her audience. So I'm not that specific when I um, do hashtags. What I like to do, and I'm gonna try this honestly, just to see if it works. But what I typically do is a couple things. I try to make sure I hashtag a location that I'm in. I try to um, hashtag what we're doing in the photo, like whatever's relevant to that photo. And then I make sure that I have a branding in there. I put Robin Breeze Group in there every time and I put High Garden Real Estate in there every time. Um, and I have, when you go to your insights, about 50% of the people who like my posts have found me from hashtags. So I do know, I do know that those work. I would, and Tracy, I think you said your hashtags work quite a bit too, right? Okay, so that's really it with the algorithm. I told you I was gonna try to keep it simple. Really, the biggest things, comment, like, and share on other people's posts. Be, be a follower, be a fan, and you will get that in return. Make sure to check your DMs and use hashtags um, and try to gain exposure that way. In Instagram, it's not about a community party. It's more about one-on-one -on -one conversations. So keep that in mind when you're on that platform. The resources I used in a lot of these slides is from later.com that we talked about in the beginning. Jen's Trends, this is her handle on Instagram. I'd highly recommend following her. And then um, another Instagram account called Creators. I believe they're the creators. They are like um, graphic designers for Instagram and they have a lot of Instagram tips on there too. So I try to follow them to get the latest because as you know, this changes all the time. So we'll keep you posted. Does anybody have any questions or anything to add? No? All right, guys. Well, I will get this um, recorded, posted, recording posted, and then I'll also send you those call to action, that call to action list so you can use that too. If you need anything else, I'm happy to help. So have a great week, everybody. Thanks, Robin. Welcome. Bye. Thank you, Robin. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.